Where will space travelers live in the future? You decide. Where does NASA come up with all those amazing ideas, particularly the ones that involve travel to distant planets and colonies and that sort of stuff? Sometimes they get those ideas by asking you. NASA often will hold design challenges. In fact, a recent one called the XHAB 2017 Challenge just closed their proposal system. NASA looked at five different areas where we could enhance habitats and make them more suitable for long-term spaceflight. The first was the idea of recycling and reclaiming materials for reuse aboard spacecraft or habitats. NASA wants engineers to design a device that is both a 3D printer and a recycler. So the idea being you could print something out on one side, and if it didn't come out properly, you could put it through the recycler where it would melt down the polymers and it would be ready for another print job. Second up is the idea of a water condensation measurement device that would go along with the resource prospector. And I was so disappointed to find out this isn't actually a grizzled old stereotype from a Western who says things like, hee hee, I just mind me some moon water. They call me loony. There's H2O in the Bar Hills. No, the resource prospector is actually a robot that will rove around on places like the moon and look for different types of resources, including water. But we have to have a way to measure the amount of water it gathers to determine if it's actually worthwhile. Thus, the water condensation measurement device that you guys have to make. Third, so they want a gadget that can turn wastewater into plant nutrients, which essentially means turning your pee into plant food. I was trying to find a better way of saying this, but that's basically the idea. But the important thing to remember is that we may be strapped for resources when we go to distant planets, so we need to be able to make use of everything we bring with us, even our pee. Fourth is the idea of a watering system for plants in microgravity. And you might think, well, that's simple. We have sprinkler systems already, but in microgravity, those little beads of water could go floating every which way and not hit the plants at all. Moreover, this system will also deliver plant nutrients to the plants. And since we just got done talking about where those plant nutrients come from, trust me, you want a high precision water delivery device for those plants. And the final element of this engineering challenge is to design a radially accelerated food production system, otherwise known as a rotating farm. See, by rotating, you can simulate gravity through centrifugal force. Also, they might want to see if we could expand this for astronauts to simulate gravity and improve their health on long-term space flights. But I hear you cry out, hey, What's in it for me? Why would I give all my awesome ideas to NASA? How about for cold, hard cash? You see, NASA typically awards these proposals with amounts ranging from $10,000 to $20,000. But you can't just take that moolah and go blow it on a fun weekend in Vegas. You're actually supposed to use it to produce prototypes and studies to prove if your idea is worthwhile or not. Still, at the end of the day, you're going to help people get to distant planets, and that's pretty awesome. And that leads me to a question for you guys this week. What luxury item would you absolutely not want to live without in your space habitat of the future? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that little like button and join the forward thinking think tank by subscribing to the channel. Big thanks to Toyota for sponsoring our show. We really appreciate it. And hey guys, before you go, you need to check out these other amazing videos right over here. <laughs>